immediately at the conclusion of that study, uh, started touring the United States providing lectures at universities. And there's two lectures that he's providing. One is called Directed Evolution, mm -hmm. Public Policy and Human Enhancement. And the second is called Transhumanism and the Future of Democracy. And you can go to the Arizona State University, and that second lecture is available right now as a podcast. So as long as it's on their website, you can go and actually listen to the lecture that grew out of public funding. So it's happening at the executive level by presidential allowance. It's happening through the U.S. Uh, Department of Health. As you've documented yourself on your show numerous times, the U.S. military is interested in super soldier technology and extended performance warfighter for uh, total battlefield domination and literally billions of dollars over mm -hmm. a decade have flowed. And, and now you probably saw where the 2011 budget for DARPA includes several million dollars for what they call bio design. Mm -hmm which is the purpose of which is to create an immortal organism, and they even want a kill switch put in it in case this thing becomes a lethal force and, and you know, the, uh, gets out of Pandora's box. Meanwhile, uh, Iron Man 2 is out in the theaters, <laughs> you know, and uh, he's wearing the exoskeleton, so that's another promotional movie for the military. You know, Tom, another thing that a lot of people aren't aware of, just briefly go over this, is what genetically modified food could be doing to our DNA structure in addition to these attempts to move us into this transhumanistic reality. Um, I'm sure you've seen a lot of these studies that have come out recently even reaffirming uh, the damage that does to our liver, our kidneys, mm -hmm. our organs. No, that's exactly right. And, and, and Alex, I, we're not going to know for probably a decade, but we are the, we are the lab rats when it comes to genetically modified foods. Those tests you're referring to are pad puste. Uh, did uh, tests, which was suppressed by a giant corporation whom I will not name. Uh, his, his research was confirmed by other independent studies. Uh, Rena Ermakova mm -hmm. did studies. And uh, Greenpeace, as you know, has been involved with other uh, persons who have been suing uh, some of the corporations to try to, to get this information out into the public. And slowly but surely it's coming out into the public. And the thing was that the tests were done in such a way that they, they could have actually even been peer reviewed in that they were done through redundancy. We did a trial, we did it again, we did it again, and every time we starved rats and then set in front of them genetically modified potatoes and organic potatoes mm -hmm. and then open the door, they'll run to eat the organic potatoes. They don't even want the genetically modified food until there isn't any other option. Mm -hmm. And then when they eat it, their offspring is, is developing a cancerous tumors. They're, they're, they're half the weight they should be. They're dying at half-life. Uh, these are the kind of tests that in the history of the United States would, have, would immediately have put the brakes on this technology, but mm. it seems like the FDA now is owned by some of these corporations, actually taking the reports from inside the corporation's own specialists or, or employees or whatever who are saying this is not a threat to human health, and yet where the, where the test fields where genetically modified crops are being raised downwind from these, people are developing respiratory uh, conditions that seem to be above their nation's national averages. There, there is a significant amount of material that's being suppressed right now uh, just with genetically modified crops. So then extrapolate what that might mean when we start talking about genetically modified animals and genetically modified humans who also are going to be now in the environment in the very near future. Uh, you could go in, uh, you know, mad cow disease, mm -hmm. for instance, developed as a result of cows eating some of their own DNA, eating their own byproducts, a type of cannibalism, and it led to a kind of brain disease. Mm. So now imagine in the near future, you're in the, you're in the restaurant and you're eating goat cheese, and, and somehow some you know, transgenic goat escaped its environment and has been out there breeding, and now all of a sudden you're consuming human DNA. Well, I'll tell you, I am not a vegetarian, but I think about it more and more these days <laughs> when I read about cloned meat. Yeah. I mean, it's like, this isn't safe. I've actually had these arguments with people, Tom, where I'm trying to explain the, you don't want to be eating cloned cow. They're like, oh, at least it's not genetically modified. So w have you caught some of the latest reports on, on where this is going? The last I read was a couple years ago, and they said that they weren't able to trace the semen from the bull 
um, once it gets to that point so it can already be unleashed into our food supply without them being able to detect it, potentially, these, these clone meat products. The, the problem with it, I mean, when in history have we said we're going to create something and we're going to keep it, your, your show, you know, out of the box has some history behind it. I don't care if it's killer bees or anything else we ever did that we mm. said we will be able to contain this. It won't get out of its environment. It reminds me of the movie Jurassic Park when Ian Malcolm, that weasley looking scientist who subscribes to the chaos theory mm. says nature will find a way. And that is a fact. If we create these products, nature is going to find a way for it to cross over into the natural environment. And when it does, it could lead to a biological nightmare. Imagine what's going to happen with prion contamination. Mm -hmm. Imagine what could happen with farm animals. You know, Wired Magazine recently ran an article. Uh, this may be six months ago, eight months ago now maybe. Anyway, it was called Farm Animals, P-H-A-R-M crank out drugs. Mm -hmm. The idea behind it was the pharmaceutical industry wants to create transgenic animals because they can bypass having to go, let's say, to the FDA mm -hmm. to get permission for human trials of an experimental drug. Well, the way to get around that and not have to get permission is you create a transgenic animal that's got human DNA and you can use it as your laboratory to see how those human elements, those, those parts, are going to respond to this treatment for a particular kind of disease. And you can kind of write around the FDA's guidelines and say, we, we tested this against human DNA mm -hmm. and it works. Um, so Wired Magazine wanted to write an article. Uh, the, the writer for Wired Magazine, uh, her name was Elizabeth Svoboda. And she contacted me. She had read uh, an editorial that I had written for WorldNet Daily that was raising caution about some of this. And uh, she said, would you be willing to be part of this article because we want, she wanted the article to be balanced. And I said, sure. And I sent her a couple pages, maybe 10 different issues in which I thought, you know, caution could be raised. When the article came out, nothing I wrote was included. And I emailed her and I said, Elizabeth, how come nothing I provided was included? And she said, originally it was in the article, but the editors at Wired Magazine censored it out because they wanted the article to have more of a positive approach to, pharm to, to pharmaceuticals from transgenic animals, meaning that we are actually depriving the public from information that they should have in order to reach a decision in the public forum as to whether there ought to be concerns and therefore they can pressure their legislators, they can pressure mm -hmm. their governments to either not fund or fund or even provide legislation like Bush was calling for to prohibit it. But there was one line that I had used, and I'll, I'll say this and I won't stay on this article issue, but I had said we need to be cautious about tinkering with God's plan. The reason that I knew that my material was originally in the article is because it was a scientist by the name of Vanda Lavore. And in her material that was left in the article, she said, some people say we shouldn't be tinkering with God's plan. But she said, if we find a cure for cancer through a transgenic animal, nobody's going to be saying you shouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to email Mrs. Vanda Lavore and suggest that she watch the movie I Am Legend with Will Smith because it actually starts out with that very premise. You have, a, you have a geneticist on a television show saying we have found the cure for cancer. And the cure for cancer turns out that they blended human and animal DNA because some animals are more resilient to cancer mm -hmm. and then from that derived a vaccine. And they vaccinated all the world and everybody celebrates because now we don't have cancer. And then the scene changes and it's a year or two years or whatever down the road and most of all life on earth has been wiped out. Why? The unintended consequence of blending humans and animal uh, DNA for a vaccine led to the creation of a human form of rabies, which then was, would have never been natural to our, uh, to our system, wipes out most of mankind. And, and that's that, based on a real scientific possibility. And that's very amazing that it's sitting there in a Hollywood movie. I think we should talk about that a little bit in a moment. All these Hollywood movies, including Gattaca, which you brought when you came to the studio a couple of years ago. But one, one quick point, again, back to genetically modified food, um, fertility rates dropping. Mm -hmm. And it, it really becomes a, a moral discussion for those listening to this. The, the, the food that we're eating, not just the fast food, but the stuff that you're getting from Safeway and Fred Meyer, it's not right. And it's doing something to our offspring. And I know there's all this propaganda out there saying there's too many people on the planet. Oh, we've <laughs> got to cull the population. But how is it morally right for them to decide what's in our food and how it's structured? 
Yeah, and is there a and, connection? And whether or not, whether or not we, we can eat, uh, drink raw milk.